Oh, this is so exciting. I'm, uh, I, you weren't here earlier. I uh, was talking about how I've never actually been to Jewel. I've never been to the Julian system. That's going to be pretty cool to see what's there. Do a couple landings. Close now. Close now. About 10, 15 seconds left on this. We're going to stop it once we get down below about 30, 40 meters per second of delta V left, and we're going to fine tune that burn, dial it in real close to where we want it. As uh, small changes make a big difference. Last uh, little second. You can see this, uh, this brown ring? That's our actual orbit here. We go. We have so now we've guaranteed a jewel intercept, which you can see our periapsis, our actual periapsis is 980,000 million. We're gonna try to bring that down. Boost on up. We go. Now we're coming back around it. That's weird. periapsis down, but it's bringing our periapsis up, which is confusing to me. Wait, no, that's fixing it. Okay. We'll just do this. Okay, there we go. Now it's bringing it in line. Wait for a second there. 30 mil, 20 mil, Oh, one mil. Go. Oh. We overshot it a little bit. That's okay. We are on intercept for Jewel. Hooray! We did it. This is great. Um, I'm gonna switch around to retrograde here and try to put a little burn in just to bring that down closer to 300. Probably not even gonna dump more than a single meter per second of delta V at it. It is going to be such a sensitive burn. In fact, I'm going to bring our throttle down to like 15%. Um, and then just feather that throttle a little bit to get us dialed in closer to 300k. Wait, though. We don't want to start burning until we're at the right orientation with the craft like this. You do not want to turn it while it is burning um, because you'll get these jackknifing forces. Um, these, this vertical structure here is pretty stable, um, but it doesn't respond well to being turned while burning. Um, need lots of extra structural support to make that work. Okay, we are just going to very, very gently tap the throttle here, to bring that periapsis down. Oh, that's going back up. Well, all right. I guess that just is where it is. Okay, we're 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 headed for intercepted about four hundred k. That's fine. Um, really okay. Not a big deal. So, hooray! Uh, let's set up a uh, a timer. We need to set an alarm for when we actually are arriving at Jewel. Grab this. Add maneuver. Just. Set. Go. This is going to be. Cool. Mission. Okay. We'll give ourselves about five minutes notice there. Go. That is our now our longest term mission one year. And actually more than 253 days because that is pretty far off. Let's let's adjust this a bit further. 
this more accurate. Let's uh, get rid of that node. It's horrible. 50 days is quite a lot. going to be a lot more. What? <laughs> See? Fun. All right. Oh, crap. Really what I meant to do, but I guess that's actually good. Okay, um, I'm fine with this. You know, maybe I should check what is the safest stable orbit around Jewel. Um, I don't actually know. Let me, let me, let me check this. It's pretty big. Let's see, safe stable orbit about Jewel. Right, we would need um, an amount. Let's see how high its atmosphere goes. One hundred thirty-nine kilometers. Okay, so we're good then. Yeah, we're up at four. We're going to be outside of that atmosphere. Um, yeah, then I guess this maneuver node is fine. This is right when we get into the sphere of influence. And that's going to give us 20 days to periapsis, or actually 30 days to periapsis here. That'll be great. Cool mission arrives. Okay, so there we go. One year, 268 days. That's a little more accurate. Very cool. Okay. Oh, this is where we will leave this for now. Um, let's turn off SAS. Just to conserve power, make sure we don't wind up coming back to a ship that we can't fly. And go over to the uh, radiators craft here. So uh, this craft is on intercept to Minmus. Um, it is bringing an engineer with some cargo. Uh, a bunch of radiators. We're stopping by Minmus to um, do some repairs and drop off some radiators so that we can do some mining things. And then this craft is actually due to head over to the Mun for that. Um, but we are just going to hop over here. Intercept our circularization and go ahead and circularize around Minmus. And then we'll, once we've got this circularized and he's floating nice and safe in orbit, uh, we will wait to uh, actually, we'll wait to actually do that. Let's here. Until we've got our uh, Duna mission out there. Just want to make sure that we don't send our Kerbal here out into interstellar space. Zooming our way on over there to intercept. You can see we've got a bunch of satellites and relays around Minmus here. We've got some satellites and relays around Mun too. We are setting up a station here and uh, getting our mining operation going. Yep, yeah. that's what we need these radiators for, so, to keep our miners from overheating. I have a, a pretty nifty mining craft, but I didn't realize that I needed radiators on the actual ore miners. I thought I just needed radiators on the ore processors. How to deal with that? That's what this is for. Um, going on here. We not intercept. Huh? Okay. Anybody know what just happened? Why are we, why are we on, um, eight, what? We never intercepted with Minmus. We were supposed to intercept with We intercept if we, uh, keep fast forwarding.
What's going on? Okay. Sure. Okay. Never seen that happen before. All right, well, now you know what to do. I guess just fast forward if that happens to you. You can see we're basically rocketing straight past Minmas. Let's, uh, let's slow down. Nice circular orbit here. So... That way we'll just hang out here nice and safe. Park that at me six or seven. Oh, we've got a, uh, a cheetah on this. This has got great thrust to weight. Really good. Also, be massive fuel tank here. Almost circularized here. That last little burn dialed in. There we go. Okay, so now Gregster will be perfectly safe out here by Minmus until we decide to have him intercept, I think, with uh, this station right here. To get some stuff transferred over. Let's see, okay, so then, um, now, that, let's hop over to our craft that's headed to go back to a curb in focus. Wow, that was dumb luck that I clicked on that right away. I was trying to click on Kirby. But we've got two days and four minutes until our Duna transfer window. Honestly, this has gone so well. Maybe we start plotting a mission out to ELO too. I guess we have the technology. Uh, with these mammoth engines, <laughs> almost anything is possible. Okay, so here's our Duna Ike mission. We needed to um, rendezvous this with our Duna Ike with our um, Duna Refueler. Let's turn off everything here, except for Station. And find it a bit easier. Get rid of all this stuff. Clutter. Um, so this blue is us, and the station we're trying to intercept. Uh, there it is, this. We will set as target. Our descending nodes are pretty close. That should be fine. We don't need to worry about that too much. Um, and we have an intersection here between our orbits. Let's go to periapsis. What we can do is just um, check out this here and just click forward in orbit and watch for the uh, intersect target position and closest approach node here to uh, be closer together. So here you can see um, we've actually moved slightly past. If we go back in orbit, oh wait, uh, sorry, we go forward, we've moved slightly past. So if we go back in orbit here, um, this is pretty good. And then um, we need to, let's see, I don't actually, let's see. I just want that. Um, we can mess around with these settings here. Oh, ooh. going a little too hard here. Just try clicking on them. We can click on these, and uh, they will. We want to just bring that separation closer together. Went away. 
Um, we don't actually care about the relative speed because we can burn that off. We've got plenty of fuel to burn that off. We just want to bring the relatives. We just want to bring that separation down. We can do that through prograde retrograde burning and radial in out burning, um, depending on the angle you're coming in from. So I would just try both. And you'll note that after a while, it will start to go back up. So uh, just go to the other thing then, when it starts to go back up. Um, also, you'll notice here we only got to click once, so you may need to dial it in a little more to uh, be able to. You may need to rather increase the sensitivity to change it without uh, past a certain point. Let's increase the sensitivity here, and now we can dial it down past seven. And you can see, oh, now it's getting like that. And then it'll get stuck like around seven, and then, yep. Uh, so we can retrograde now. We'll just keep doing this until we get uh, four. Oops, that went up. What? Well, back down to set. I guess 7.0 is as low as that goes. Okay, so that goes down to, that brings us down to 6.3. Great. We'll do more retrograde. Down to 5. Point, about 5.7. Have more radial in. More of this. Nope, oh, we didn't need very much of that. And once we get pretty close together, say within um, a kilometer, uh, we can. Just take that and run with it. Whoops. Usually not quite so finicky. I wonder if we are, if our um, angles are thrown off more. Than hmm. okay, well, we may just need to fiddle with it. Sometimes we need to turn the, um, the sensitivity settings down pretty far to really get the burns you're looking for. We're dialing it in, just got to be a little patient. Let's overdo it a bit on the radial so that we can do a little bit more retrograde. Overdo it a little bit on the retrograde so we can do a little bit of extra radial. Oh, and we're getting down to about a kilometer. Really good. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, starting to go back up. Undo that. Some radial burning. Oh, that's too much. Okay, we'll go in the other direction. Mm. Okay, so here we may be about as close as prograde, retrograde, and radial can get us, and we may need to do some angular burning. Let's go, bringing us a little closer together. Oops. Well, that's pretty good. So we'll take this. We'll take this. That brings us very close together with pretty good relative speed, not too high. Um, and then once we get to that burn, we'll just do a correction. So let's float on over to that maneuver. Um, you can see we've got a one second burn time for this. So that just will not do. Absolutely need to limit your thrust down here to practically the bare minimum for this kind of adjustment. Although I guess here that's several minutes. So let's not do that. Let's do more like a 60 second burn. 2.5. Percent. Okay, maybe 1.5 percent. Like, okay, 2 percent is probably. Yeah, okay. So we'll start this at 31 seconds, T minus 31 seconds. And that is going to get us very, very close um, on path for intercept. Excellent. Let's go ahead and fast forward here. Uh, oh, I'm noticing, actually, we don't have any solar panels deployed. We're pretty lucky that we aren't out of electrical. I have some on this. Two. Extend these. Got some solar panels here we can extend too. Just to give us a couple extra angles. We do want to make sure that we have power generation this long term. Otherwise, we can wind up stranded. That's no fun. 
being stranded is certainly not ideal. Okay, so now we're good. We've got all of our solar panels extended out. Our power generation, we've got our satellites extended. Okay, let's fast forward over to this maneuver node. orbits okay and now we're going to burn right at our apoapsis um, to adjust our periapsis so that it's right in line with its intersect apparently we need to do some more adjusting i guess the maneuver nodes get a little confused if you have too many orbits between you and them Fortunately, this thing is fairly maneuverable with that massive SAS wheel on it, so we don't have to wait quite as long for it. Okay. So we just need to hop on to 31 seconds now. Burn. And uh, you can't see the fire, but uh, the bar is going down, so you know something's happening. We are off. Intercept. Actually, I'm going to retract these, because when we try to dock, they're going to get in the way. Pull them back. We'll, we'll extend those later. Doing a nice, slow, steady burn. Get us real dialed in. Longer burns split halfway before and after your node are going to get you the most accurate burn. Usually about a minute is ideal. If you start getting too much longer than that, then you get some pretty significant deviation just from not being at your periapsis or your apoapsis or sending, sending them, burning a little early. All right, just about 10 more meters per second of delta V change that we need here. Very, very slight burning. Get us our uh, closer to our intercept or orbital rendezvous. There we go. We have got that pretty much dialed in. So now what we want to do is set a node over here um, and just see what we can do. We can actually plan this. Uh, we are going too fast, right? We're going faster than this uh, target. So um, we can uh, highlight that so it stays on the screen and then drag this to be basically right on top of it and slow down. And you see how our separation stays about the same, but our uh, relative speed goes down. Okay, so here you can see we've then canceled out at about our relative speed of 22 meters per second, it seems. It's as low as this can get us. Yeah, okay, about 22 meters per second. Um, so that's going to cancel out most of our um, relative horizontal speed. And you can see it makes our orbits basically perfectly aligned. Um, and importantly, uh, it also moves our intersect forward slightly. If we zoom in where our intersect was, um, it is now slightly further forward. And this is important to do because you, what you want to do is make sure that you have enough time to actually do this burn. You can see our intersect actually happens at 17 minutes um, and uh, zero seconds, but our burn here is in 16 minutes. So, um, they're a little too close together. So we're going to want to start burning slightly sooner than that. We're getting out of that. Additionally, we're going to want to go ahead and switch this to 
target and then go to retrograde. Um, so this is going to point us so that we're facing the opposite direction of our momentum relative to target. This is not going to point us in the right direction yet, but when we get closer to our target, it will point us the right way. So we're going to start a few minutes back. Let's start like about here so that we have enough to maneuver around. And in fact, let's drop a quick save ahead just in case we wind up running out. This is going to bring us pretty close side by side. And what I want to do is just can't basically park next to each other, cancel out our entire orbital momentum relative to each other so that we have the same orbit about a kilometer apart. And then I'm going to fly straight at the other one. That will bring us very close together. Okay. Um, so now that we are here, let's see if we can find visually acquire our target around here somewhere. We may not quite be close enough yet. Oh yes, there they are. That's our refueling craft that we're going to try to rendezvous with. You can see we've got our thrust limiter heavily limited, but it's still not limited enough. Bring this all the way down to 0.5 for this to be a reasonable burn. Oh wait, we don't actually have um, anything plotted here, but we're going to bring this down as much as we can. And uh, fast forward a little bit till we're closer to get. Now that we're turned around, bring it down to about maybe one and a half kilometers, something like that. And then let's burn relative to the target retro, uh, retrograde. Okay, so this is not going to be fast enough. Let's throttle up a bit. There we go. That's about right. You can see we're canceling out that speed relative to the target. We want to bring that down to zero. Throttle down a little bit. Go. Oh, okay, so now we turn towards the target and burn at them. We use RCS for this just to help spin around. We just want to give ourselves a nice prograde vector pointing at this target, maybe about 10 meters per second. Right? Okay, so now again, we want to go retrograde relative to the target. I want to make sure to go retrograde here. And this will stop our momentum. Once we get a little closer, we can do very gentle burns here just to stop them. And uh, we are just floating at them. Actually, Let's, uh, let's double check. Are we going to intersect here? Yeah, it looks like we're going to intersect. But we'll wait until we're really close. Burn off this speed. It's pretty good. Uh, adjust back to retrograde to target and um, start killing off this speed as soon as we drop under. We just want to stop again. We want to park. And this makes our orbits effectively the same. So now we're, we're stationary beside each other effectively. And so what I want to do is point at the target, but I want to make sure to turn off RCS, crucially, um, so that we don't wind up giving ourselves some sort of orbital velocity relative to the target. 
we're just going to do easy mode docking. So, point this at the target, we're going to point that at this. Roll from here. Oh. Alright, so we're pointing right at the target now. And then we're going to press the bracket button, which will switch us over to a ne any nearby craft. That will take us to this. I'm going to turn around, find this, and select the docking port on the front. My docking port. What? Okay, there we go. Set as target is what we'll do. Now that we have that docking port, and then we'll do the same thing. Turn this around without RCS. We want to turn this around. so that it is facing the target. And then once we've got this turned around, facing the target here, we want to go back over one more time and set this, uh, set our uh, Duna Ike mission to have a target of this docking port up front here. And we'll have, we'll be all set up for our easy mode docking. I didn't come up with this idea. I think um, the YouTuber Matt Lown, I've seen um, credit himself with this method, but it is very, very helpful. So now this is pointing at that other docking port. We're uh, going to select the docking port on the front of that. Grabbing that docking port. Hmm. I feel like it's, it's, um, well, the target is the probe core right beneath it. We'll probably be able to readjust once we get a bit closer. Okay, so now that we've got this, we'll turn on RCS, and then, crucially, we will press the key that we have bound to translate forward. Now, this is not pitch or yaw. This is not your WASD. Um, for me, I have these bound to IJKL, and you can see it pushes those RCS thrusters on the bottom. Um, so this is going to accelerate us forward. Um, and because we have our um, RCS set to keep us pointing at target, and our target is that RCS port, um, we're just going to keep, we're going to go right towards a perfect docking. Now you do want to be careful about your speed here. Um, it's better to be patient to keep the speeds low so you don't wind up careening into each other and bouncing off. That can mess up this whole process so much make it such a hassle to fix. So come in nice and slow, under a couple meters per second is ideal. Just wait, you know, we can always time warp a little bit. Feeling impatient. You can see we'll slowly cruise towards each other. When we cancel this time warp, you'll be able to see this, uh, the power of this method as both craft will point at each other now. So, oh shoot. I should slow down. Okay, we're going to cancel our momentum relative to target now. Okay. You can see there is a little bit of jackknifing happened. That is because this is not targeting the docking port. There we go. So now we'll set the docking port as the target. Okay, what is happening here? Why are we missing so much? Okay, um, so I am going to go retrograde to target here. I'm going to kill our orbital velocity again now that we've got the targets acquired properly. <laughs> I think this uh, was jackknifing because it was aiming at our docking port, which was down here. Or not our docking port, our octo, which was down there. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cancel out our momentum. We got close enough to fix that issue our engine. Ooh, okay, we need to ratchet this way down. We can just feather this. Kill this momentum relative to the target, or rather give us, I guess, a bit more momentum relative to the target. Bring that down to zero. Okay, 
and then we're going to, without S RCS, use SAS to switch over to facing target. Then we're going to do the same thing over there. We're going to use SCS, or SAS only to switch over to facing target. Pointed. Yep, seems like it's uh, figuring out the orientation now. You can see they'll both bring each other into alignment here. Go to are pointed nice and straight at each other. Let that stabilize a bit. A quick time warp jump just to um, make any physics stop happening. Then we'll hop over here. Um, keep this set onto target. RCS, translate forward. This should work perfectly. Given that's a little bit of speed, let's make sure this is staying on target. I couldn't remember if that was uh, something I had left on there or not. Giving ourselves just a little bit of speed here. There we go. So for docking purposes, we are basically zooming at this point. I'm just going to let it coast on in as these two docking ports bring each other together. Um, oh, importantly, I guess, are we, are we controlling from this docking port? We were. I'm going to make sure you can see we're coming in nice and straight onto each other. So convenient to do docking this way. Eight seconds left now. Down a bit. We can see the magnet starting to kick in a little bit here. We get within the last couple meters per second here. Those RCS Werner engines puff us into just the right alignment. Slow it down a bit. Really let those magnets take over and bring us together. Right as they touch, boom, we're connected. All right, so let's turn off RCS and SAS for now. And what do is pin these tanks. So that they stay up. Right, and um, then I believe we can press pause on all of these. So that no fuel can go into them. And then bring up is here. Which will be going... Let me double check. Yes, okay. So this should, this one over here on the left is the one which is going um, towards Juna. Okay, there we go. And now we should be able to press out, out, right. And all of that is draining into uh, the other side now. So we're refueling this tank, this uh, craft on the left with all of this fuel from the craft, right, the fuel tanker. Oh, interesting that it seems like it is going into the other containers. I thought it wouldn't. Um, um, so we're going to then unpin this up. I guess we need to do these one tank at a time. I thought there was a way to do multiple tanks at a time, but I guess not. You got them to efficiently drain.
And you can see that whatever is in this tank is just getting evenly split between the other tanks. Crossfeeding. Here we go. So these first two tanks here are empty now. Uh, or sorry, the first and third tank are empty. Need to empty the second tank. <clears throat> right. Uh, okay. So, we have filled up the whole fuel tank for this craft on the left. Uh, let's drop this fuel here back into this tank here. Good morning. Good morning, hon. Enable all of these tanks. This lets them get used for engines and stuff. Um, might as well go ahead. Tank. Get everything transferred over. Hey. That will marginally increase our efficiency maneuvering this thing around if it's um, got all of its weight at the back there where those Werner engines are helping us turn. Um, okay, so now that that is done, we want to right-click here, and I guess we would click the other one, here, and click decouple. Now our two crafts have separated, and switch SAS on, and uh, rotate slightly. Did these, uh, <laughs> did these reattach or something, right? These should be detached. Let's try with RCS. Um, yeah, we are still attached. That doesn't make any sense. What? Um, one moment. Uh, undock. Okay. Yes, there we go. That's better. All right, and I'm going to step away for a moment. Right back. Woo, we did it.
Okay. Oh, thanks for your patience. Get you hanging out. Okay, so we have just refueled our uh, jewel mission. It's actually a pretty substantial amount of fuel left in this. Uh, so let's just leave this here. We'll call this LKO. <laughs> yeah, L LKO fuel tanker or something. Just uh, leave that floating there. This can uh, dock with some stuff. At some point, we want to set it to be, I guess, a radial out. It's going to be uh, best with that. It always gets some sun on its way around because it is radial out at some point in the orbit. That's good. And we can just turn SAS off. Just leave that there. We don't need to worry about it until we need to reunite with it. Now this, on the other hand, we need to plan a transfer node in one day and two hours. Let's go ahead and jump orbits up until we are one day and two hours out. It's going to be about there, two hours and 30 minutes, okay. So this has got us pretty close. Oh, we need another orbit here. Right about here is our ideal transfer over uh, to Luna. Okay, that's good. Let's turn up uh, a big prograde burn here at uh, Periapsis. Give ourselves a new periapsis, rather. So a big prograde burn close to our apopsis. Just until we have escape velocity. And then um, we'll jump a little ahead on that escape velocity burn. Whoops. And uh, burn prograde again. And this node is the one that we'll use to set up our intercept. And we're looking for Duna, which is this. And notably, our uh, orbital inclination is nearly perfect. That's great news. And you can see our closest approach here is already not bad. This should be pretty great. This is the, the beauty of transferring at the right time of year. And the right year sometimes, depending on the planet. Okay, so we're just bringing this separation down. Under 5 mil, we want to get about 300,000 meters. Right now we are at 3.5 million kilometers, but we are just burning prograde, going faster and faster and faster. See? Uh, almost, what was that? We get an intercept with something else? Oh, with Kerbin. We re that's a, a Kerbin encounter. <laughs> Don't want another Kerbin encounter. Keep going. Bring that separation down until it starts to go back up. And it's not going back up. There it goes. Okay, so it's starting to go back up here around 500k. Let's narrow this down a bit with some radial burning. Sometimes a little bit of that. Well, this will help. Try to get about 300k. Okay, so it started to go back up, so let's uh, let's burn prograde a little more. Got the right, a little bit closer to the right radial position here. Now we're almost there. 400,000 kilometers now. Oh, wait. We're wanting 300,000 meters. We're not 300,000 kilometers. Hold up. We're still getting our intercept. Silly me. Let's keep bringing this on down. Okay, it started to go up again, so we'll burn prograde more. Go up, then we'll burn radial in more. And pretty soon here, we'll get our intercept. We'll get captured. 
Oh, so now we've got our capture and we can start watching the very opposite. This is what we really want to bring down. Doing some radial end burning, got it under 20 million, okay, about 20 million meters. Buy some prograde, oh, that brings it up, what about retrograde? Retrograde brings it down, okay, oh, nope, not by very much. It seems like we are a little off our orbital plane, we could probably fix this. A slight normal burn. That'll bring us down to about... Even just a half a degree or so with these distances, as you can see, can make a difference of 10 million meters or more. Going back up now, so let's go back down. Uh, try doing some more burns now, see if we can't get a bit closer. Oh, there we go, under 4 million meters, burning a little retrograde. Oops. Ah, hand slipped a little there. Got about, right about 4 million meters. Do a do radial inburn. If that takes us under 4. Radial out then. This is the way. That's going back up now. So we just need to keep fine tuning this. We get orbits. There we go. Nice. Okay. That's about right. Let's double check the delta Vs here. We should have way, way, way more than enough fuel. This is yeah, only 537 for that transfer. And this is 931. And we have 4,017. I think we're good, chat. Good. Right. I had a feeling this was going to be massive overkill, and that is fine by me. Perhaps we can use this to assist with our landing on um, on Jewel, or not Jewel, on Duna, um, and that will allow us to have more fuel in the land. We slow down a bit more. In theory, we could slow down enough to re-enter without needing the other. Oh, um, we need to turn up engine's throttle. There we go. You can see at max throttle, that's only a 40 second burn, so good. Let's drop a quick save. Fast forward over to that. E round and around we go. Okay. Go. No. Our Kerbin to Duna window is coming right up. We want to get moved over to that maneuver node. We want to start this burn right at about T minus 20 seconds. Jump ahead a few seconds. Uh, start burning right around 20.
，要还是啊？ It's a big burn. This is gonna get us on escape path out of the carbon system. Another burn planned after this to get us intercepting with Duna. Captured into the Duna system. See, we're gonna zoom right past our uh, fuel tanker that we just left in low carbon orbit. Pretty neat that that's on screen here. fuel tanker. Thank you for your surveys. <laughs> okay, so now we go over to this maneuver node here, and we are going to there. Like before, we're probably going to need to adjust this to get the actual periapsis that we need. Yeah, you can see here we're five million meters out. We need to make this slightly different, but we should be able to. Ooh, what is going on? Uh... Not burning anything, right? I don't have any. I'm not burning my engines. What's going on here? Why is this changing so much? What's going on? 51 years? What? Why is it predicting something 51 years in the future? to warp ahead a little bit. See if we can't get it to stop doing that. Yeah, that's nice. At least it decided to stay the same now. Okay. Um, so, anyway. Uh, well, I wanted to just slightly adjust our Duna um, intercept, but it seems like we're going to have to redo it because there was something very strange going on there. Anyway, um, should be fairly straightforward. Bring these together. And, um, uh, we already have a good idea of what kind of Delta V needs we have here, so I'm just going to... Uh, it looks like I'm overdoing it by a lot here, but... I need to... All this... Up here, whoops, miss it. Ah, yes, there we go. Okay, so now we've got our intercept. Need to fine tune this down under 300,000. What we needed before was a slight thermal burn. Now we can retrograde. Radial app also. Oh, that's too far. What? Hmm. Oh, we were just still not quite on that orbital plane that we needed. Okay, so this will get us passing close to Duna. You can see this is only a 19 second burn, 600 delta V, um, getting us a little closer to Duna than the last burn. This is actually a little better than the previous one. Let's ratchet this down to like 48%. Maybe 49. An even number. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's do 20 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Do a 40 second burn. 
do a time skip. We're going to do this burn for a map view so that uh, we can watch our periapsis. going to take a little bit of feathering at the end to get it just right. Go. Now this brown line here, this is our actual orbit. The yellow line here is Luna's orbit. Oh, I should have grabbed this sooner. <laughs> okay, there we go. Want to get these two indicators separate. Okay. Uh, <laughs> overshot it a little bit. Let me double check that this is a safe orbit. Pretty sure that should be fine. Duna's lowest safe orbit is 42 kilometers, and we are at uh, 267 kilometers. We are good. We'll definitely be able to orbit there. Okay. All right, so we have transferred to Duna. And we've got so much Delta V left, we should be able to shuttle things around the Duna system pretty nicely, get them there with extra fuel left over, more than I thought we would. Very exciting. So that basically guarantees we'll get our relay up in Duna, and that can be convenient. So when Duna's on the other side of Kerbin, uh, or Kerbal, we'll have a, a relay over there to uh, help get us connected to the other half of the solar system. Very cool. Uh, okay. So then, um, let's plot out where our actual intercept is. We want to create a node here, and then drag it over until it snaps. Now, this is a um, predicted Duna encounter here. We're just going to leave that there and set this as an alarm. Hey, our ship has arrived in Duna. There we have it. So, as you can see now, we have a few crucial missions in orbit. We've got our EVE missions finally arriving here in 88 and 134 days, around the time the best transfer window for EVE comes back. Our DUNA mission will arrive after that, and our Jewel mission uh, a whole year later than uh, any of that stuff. The Jewel mission is going to be a slow burn. We'll get to uh, see that come to fruition in a bit. Um, but in the meantime, for our career, we've got some other things that we want to do. I've got some um, ore mining operations I want to get set up on uh, the Mun and Minmus to help with some deep space interplanetary stuff. Uh, we've got some quests here as well, some contracts to uh, get that going. So that will be very profitable. We've also got um, other missions here to expand uh, 
our surface outpost on the Mun, which is, I'm gonna get that done when we get those mining operations done. And other things. So we've got some, uh, some interesting, very interesting uh, missions to do. Um, for now, we're going to go ahead and call it here. This was a great stream. I hope you really enjoyed. Um, I'll probably be back on later streaming um, something else. Not really sure what I'm wanting to play more today. But, uh, I hope you enjoyed. And uh, we'll have yeah, a good rest of your day. Thanks for stopping by.